Yeah, aha. Uh -huh. The brown truck. I thought I'd show you what it brought. And a big thank you to Darren. Uh, I appreciate the advice. We're uh, going to be using our Kershaw Oh So Sweet. Aha! Uh -huh. It's got the spring assist. Got to do it like the prepper boys, right? If you're going to do a box opening. I hate box on openings. And then people do a review on stuff that they, uh, it's brand new. So, but in this case, I think we can squeak by. I ask for your forgiveness, and we'll get her done here. Okay. I was going to buy this from uh, CB Performance, but they don't sell these, so they could probably get it. I'm sure they would. But I got me a, I got me a bump stick. I don't know that many of you folks really appreciate all the golden nuggets that Darren shared with us. Um, I probably don't catch them all, but I sure try to pay attention. And I went with the Ingle lifters just to make sure that uh, I didn't have any issues with compatibility. So we'll do the little bird trick. Uh, and we'll make our little groove between the oil lines here, the oil grooves. And, uh, yeah, I just thought I would uh, open this up and say thank you to VW Darren for all that he does for our garage gang community. And uh, I don't think I will share with you much about the cam. I guess I can pull it out of the box. Let's do a little valve train comparison, camshaft comparison. We're in the kitchen and I originally was going to go with this camshaft on the left which was from CB Performance and it was an Eagle brand camshaft. I really had a tough time trying to decide which camshaft to go with for this uh, what started out as a 1679 bill, but now has grown to an 1800. So, VW Darren had made a uh, left a comment on one of my videos, and I went with his recommendation, and I switched, like I have so many times in this project, to this Engel Cam. And they're both excellent products, but let's take some of the, a look at some of the things that were my concerns. Uh, and obviously, it's obvious the difference looking at the profile of this cam lobe, which is the uh, superior one. I can see it. Can you? Look how peaky. Oops. Can't see here. Look how peaky that lobe is. And now look at this. That looks a little softer, doesn't it? Doesn't it? It does to me. And there's a reason for that. See how that has a high sharp peak? And this one has sort of a lower rounded peak. But the one on the right, when set up properly, will lift higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, with this first Eagle brand, I had picked up these uh, bug pack lifters, I think, several years ago when I was doing my 2 liter build. And I never used them. Uh, these were the... Uh, Lubelobe lifters. I don't know if you can see there's a little hole right there in the center that was supposed to uh, lubricate your camshaft The big trick thing. Well, one of the things that really concerned me about it was this cup And this is what ultimately made me decide not to go with this particular lifter is the shape of that cup and we're gonna look at uh, a different cup See, I don't know if that shows up. See how this is, this is a used lifter. It's a little bit different shape here. And it has a, it holds the push rod more in the center of that lifter. Then we're going to look at this brand new angle lifter that I just ordered. And it is that same one piece design. And it's got that little cup down there. Well that concerned me as far as adjusting your lifter since the push rods are horizontal I thought well gosh this has got a nice big hole but I'm afraid that it, as I'm adjusting my valves that that 
going to set down in here. And I don't know that that's really the case because there is just the slightest little grain of a cup. Now this is not a eagle lifter. This is a uh, empty lifter. Was just on a on a pack on the peg hooks on the wall of a shop, and I thought, yeah, I'll try that. I like the idea of that hole for uh, lubrication. But uh, anyhow, let's take uh, let's be anal about this. We like to be anal. What what is all this? What's the big deal on all of these? You know, why are you doing this? Uh, well, I'm doing it because I can, and. Uh, I like to pay attention to the small details of things. If if you're doing this for a living or in a production shop, maybe the boss would be doing this once in a while, but once they made their choices, they, they're not going to check all of these things individually. Okay, so let's take a look at this old original stock lifter. And maybe before we even start that, we're, we're always talking about grams, okay? Well, how the heck much is a gram? So I decided that uh, I would use some sheets of toilet paper, and we're just going to lay a sheet of toilet paper in the zeroed out scale. And now I'm going to take a second sheet of toilet paper, a square. Two squares of toilet paper. We'll take one square off, it doesn't register. Two squares of toilet paper. That's how much a gram. <laughs> of course, now this may vary according to the brand of toilet paper that you purchase. If you go with that cheap single ply, I don't know what this is, and that flower pattern has got to be, <laughs> got to account for something, right? So that's what we're talking about in the difference of weight here. So here is an old, from a 1300 Volkswagen engine. Here's a stock lifter out of that engine. It weighs 87 grams, okay? Now we're going to take this Lubelobe lifter, MP Lubelobe lifter, 92. And we're going to take this brand new Ingle lifter, and it's 96. So, 4 times 3, 12 squares of toilet paper. That's the difference between that. Now, there's a lot of guys I know, personally, in my area, and that I used to run around the sand dunes with, that would not use double springs on their valve train. They say it robs horsepower, they use the stock springs, and so on and so forth, and we've looked at springs in other videos. But here is a stock push rod, aluminum push rod, from the... I believe it's out of a 1600. It weighs 38 grams with the tips on it. Now, I'm going to show you a chrome moly push rod. 68. What was the other one? 68 versus 39. So the chrome moly is going to be much stronger. Now, here's some that I just bought, purchased, and I was going to use on this build. Oops, I'm going to put the tip. That's not cut to length, but the tip is missing. 91 versus 39 on the stock one. So you're adding weight there. You're adding weight to the to the drivetrain, or if you want to call it that, of the of the camshaft. The work that these cam lobes are going to do. Now it's important that these lifters and your valves follow the exact profile of the camshaft. It sets the valve gently back down on the seat. Now let's stop and pause a, a second here and let's look at let's look at the math, okay? Okay. So, a camshaft turns one half as many times as the crankshaft. And you have two springs, doesn't make any difference, but you because it's half the size it's twice the size but it's half the speed got that so if your engine's idling at a thousand rpm the camshaft's turning at 500 rpm so we put in 500 and we're going to divide that by revolutions per minute we're going to use 60 and what does that say 
Okay, when your engine is idling, the valve is opening and closing 8.3 times every second. Okay, now 4,000 RPM, nope, half of that, half of that. 4,000 RPM stock engine in the general vicinity runs out of air and, and uh, it's 4,000 RPM. Okay, I'm just taking, taking that one. Okay, so half of that is going to be 2,000 RPM. And we're going to divide that by 60. So, 33 times in a second. 1,001. 33 times that valve. The exhaust valve and the intake valve. You don't add them together, but each valve at 4,000 RPM is opening and closing 30 times, 33 times a second. Now let's bump that up to uh, 6,000 RPM. So you take half of that, clear it, and we'll say uh, 3,000 RPM. Okay, and we're going to divide that by 60. 50 times a second. A second. So that's why you go with heavier springs and as light of valve train as you can. But I've seen these stock push rods, the steel ends will start pushing into the aluminum. It'll flare out. It'll change your uh, uh, valve lash. It happens gradually. It doesn't just wedge in there and do, do it all at once. But that's why we have to go. If you want it to follow the cam profile at higher RPM, you have to increase the spring pressure. When you increase the spring pressure, you also have to strengthen the push rod. And it helps if you can lighten the lifter. All these things come into play. And all of them can be done sloppily and your engine will run. It's the difference in how long you want that engine to run good and make good horsepower. If you want it to live and last, you pay attention to these kinds of details. So, I'm just trying to shed a little light on this. I'm not a know-it-all. I have a little bit of experience, but I've had to deal with uh, expensive parts all my life. And in my field of work, which was uh, plumbing and HVAC work, I would have a pump seal that I would hold in my hand. That pumps, the one seal alone would be like a thousand dollars. Some of them ranged up uh, to three thousand dollars. So we had to pay attention to detail. It's just part of my training. It's the way I've operated throughout my career and why I stuck in that career for so many years because I found it fascinating. And I was always operating with somebody else's money. You know, it's easy at work to order tools and order parts and do this stuff and assemble it. But, you know, it's critical that that stuff is done right. There, You're not going to help with your job very long if you start making expensive mistakes or there's equipment failures. And all this just kind of rolls over into my personal life. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it was my personal life that rolled over into my work life. But... Anyhow, people are made different. I used to run around the sand dunes with guys that used to say, Oh, I fill your head with all of that garbage. I don't want to be thinking about that. Every time my engine makes a little noise, uh, I just don't worry about it. I just keep going. If the oil light doesn't come on and I'm making power, I don't care. You're driving slower than the rest of us because every time you hear a little noise, you're analyzing it. Oh, did I tighten this bolt tight enough? Is this, that? And that's partially true. But it's just the way I am. Anyhow, I hope that explains a little bit of where I'm coming from. There are some, so many variables with these little engines, and that's why I'm so fascinated with Volkswagens. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy, jeezy, out.